Actually, let's do uh, Moldova next. Are you all? Where did your speakers go? Okay. All right. <laughs> they conveniently had to be. <laughs> <laughs> cases here. We'll, um, we'll do Moldova and then we'll do um, Mumbai right after that because there, is, there are t kind of governmental pieces uh, to both of these. Um, okay, so my Twitter name? Or, no, you don't have one. I don't, I don't even have Twitter. I okay, like we'll get you set up. I actually just did it. And you're Gina BB, right? Gina BB? Yes, I'm Gina BB. So. Okay, and we'll get you set up. I'm Olivia Maddox, actually. Um, my name is there. Um, I just set it up like 15 minutes ago, but I haven't had a chance to explore it, so there's nothing going on. on there. Um, so Moldova basically um, recently had a election, and the Communist Party won, and a bunch of NGOs in Moldova, which is sandwiched between the Ukraine and Romania, just to kind of give you guys an idea. We had no idea where Moldova was, so. Um, Basically, a bunch of NGOs in the country and student organizations organized a riot using um, Twitter and Facebook, and suddenly, within a very short period of time, 15,000 people had assembled and caused massive destruction. So we were trying to think of a way that the government could proactively circumvent an event like this in the future, um, or prevent it, basically prevent it from happening. Um, and perhaps having some sort of presence on the internet, like Obama actually um, has appointed a social liaison. We were talking about how you were going to speak with her. Yeah. Um, he also has a social networking site, and he has his own website that he currently uses as a platform to hear from people in his own um, political party. He helped use it to help with fundraising and to help him get elected. But instead of just specifically having that for a particular um, political official having it for the country. I went and looked at Moldova's uh, website and it's very tourism oriented. There's really nothing on there to promote um, politics of the country or, or further the interest of the, the citizens who live there. Um, so of course they're going to get angry and they're going to use whatever kind of social networking sites they possibly can. So they actually turned off the internet because of this riot and the, there are several incidences where they've done this before. Um, most recent history brings to mind uh, Burma, and it, it didn't really stop the citizens from gathering and, and rioting anyway. Um, so on top of having some kind of government liaison um, that would monitor um, social media, um, also providing a platform, and if you, if you are having somebody who's monitoring and you see that something's rising, um, and you see that there's dissension of some kind, um, you could always send uh, a military presence or some sort of police official to the area where the riot will occur and hopefully break it up before it really takes a, a toll on anything. Um, I think that's pretty much where we, we got with this. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's good. <laughs> We'll follow that up really quickly, and then we'll do the comments all at the end with um, Mumbai, the group talking about Mumbai, uh, India. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was Sorry. like, I think, I think you're out there. <laughs> um, I'm Sophia Bilu, and um, so we were talking, ours was about the Mumbai case. So basically what happened, I forget now when it was. Um, but people, when um, the Mumbai terrorist attacks happened, um, a lot of citizens started to go on Twitter and um, tweet about basically what was happening, how, um, how the events were unfolding. They didn't know um, when it was going to end, they didn't know how many terrorists. So um, this was all of these questions came out um, through law enforcement as well as news organizations. Um, but the, the question became in news organizations and law enforcement started to tweet saying um, stop tweeting about this event and particularly stop tweeting about um, the law enforcement's activity because um, they thought that the terrorists were, were uh, you know, taking advantage of that, which they were. But um, was it their right to tell people to stop twittering about it? And twittering about what is the question. So um, we were discussing in our group what it meant to manage. Um, the question was, 
The question now is how to manage, if it is manageable at all, that the information that comes to the forefront when anyone with a cell phone or a cheap laptop can blast information around the globe with a few keystrokes. Um, we didn't think it makes sense when you say manage to shut down, um, you know, Twitter site or shut down people from tweeting something. Instead, I think um, it should be managing means um, doing it at the collective level, getting people to self-organize um, and you know manage the content in different ways. Um, so instead of you know instead of them saying shutting down on sharing activities about the police activities, um, instead people could have inundated. Um, tweets about what the terrorists were doing, maybe what they looked like, and then from that information they could have narrowed it down, who, how many terrorists there were, and a lot more information than um, maybe what they were initially getting um, through their typical means of um, reporting on this event. So it came down to a matter of maybe it was lack of the mainstream media and the formal organizations, um, uh, like how they responded to social media. So they wanted to say, hey, stop tweeting about this event, but I think it was because of their lack of knowledge of how people were using these um, communication media. So, um, and one example is, you know, I, I recently, I, I was kind of um, interviewed at various times about the Boulder Fire. I was tweeting about the Boulder Fire that happened in January, and um, the law, uh, so someone from FEMA said that I was faster than law enforcement, and I, I didn't, well, I said I told them, you know, I don't think I was faster. I think, yeah, maybe I was providing more information on Twitter. Um, I was basically collating information from different sources, but um, it was only because, to in their perspective, I was faster because they didn't know what they were doing because they, they were just starting to use it. So um, I think it's important for them to start to realize how people are using it. Um, and you know, someone from my group was pointing out how right now, just today, there was a report. An, um, an article about the Cyber Security Act that might be coming out that would give the president the power to shut down the internet. So um, I just tweeted it. <coughs> really? Cyber I Security Act that. would give president the power to shut down the internet. Oh. Did you, can you tag it CU Atlas so we can all have access to it? Did you tag it CU Atlas? I just put it online, but you're on. You're following me, so you. I'm not that adept yet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's why I. I need to, can you oh. tell me your Twitter name again? I'm sorry. Lucy Sheehan. Yeah, that's, that's a wow, question. I hadn't heard that. Interesting. Uh, that is interesting. I, something I wanted to add that has to do with your fire. Uh, something NPR did a story fairly recently about the New York City or the LA Fire Department, and they actually used Twitter to monitor. Uh, they actually monitor OMG uh, for the, so whenever whenever there's something that says OMG, they actually can go in and see. Oh, there's a fire over here, for example. So they're actually leveraging mm -hmm. Twitter. Uh, to monitor for emergencies and things like that, which is mm -hmm. really interesting. Uh, so. Yeah, but you can't believe everything you read. Exactly. But Not from one source. That's why you have to triangulate yeah, it. That's why there's a lot of people, like if there's a lot of people that are talking about a particular thing, and it maybe may even start to trend, uh, that's, that's why you... Yeah, so you have to be smart about it, because anybody can say anything. But that's the thing, rumor mongering is typically a myth, especially when you get a bunch of people. Right. That that rumor will be called out and right. someone will say, That's a rumor, that's not true. Yeah. So that's the good thing about yeah, but social how media. How do you decide which person you're gonna believe? Everyone will like, figure that out over time. Interesting that, that uh, social media is becoming more and more transparent and it's obvious. Uh, just like you were talking like you can tell when someone's lying to you for the most part. Uh, that, in my opinion that's that's I, you know? I think I'm we're going to have trusted way, filters. Way, way more skeptical. <laughs> well, I think we're going to have trusted filters. You know, we're going to have people that uh, their their links are reliable ten times out of ten. Mm -hmm. They're probably going to be reliable this time too. So I think you know you are going to have to decide who those people or what those filters are going to be. Are you going to trust FEMA if they're on Twitter? Are you going to trust the American Red Cross if they're on Twitter? Are you going to trust CNN? Like it, it you know. Who do you know to trust anyway? Like, I mean, if you say that, you can back up and keep backing up and keep backing up. Like, do you trust the reporters who are reporting for CNN to, to report correctly? Or, you know, that's, that's the thing. Like, citizen reporters are just, they, they, you have to look at them just the way you look at CNN and say, well, who, which of these reporters do I trust the most? I mean, 